Uh, no, we got four black MPs in Parliament. You know, come on, you don't really like it, do you? <laughs> I mean, you, you don't like it, but you don't mind it. Yeah, of course you don't mind it. But she at least gives them credit. Four black MPs will add a bit of color to your Parliament. I mean, you know, when you go to Parliament, they're all old and white and ugly. There's four black handsome guys in there. Maggie might get an erection every day. <laughs> oh, you're English. Are you proud to be English? Ah, oh, come on. I mean, didn't you not just told me that you went around the whole world fucking everybody up? <laughs> uh, but the British Empire gave you benefits. Of course. We gave you gold. We gave you diamond. We gave you in the sense that it's in your treasury. Every time you print a five pound note, you take my gold to balance the equivalent of it. Of course you are. You're young. You're proud of your empire. You came too late. You should have come 20 years ago. They would have sent you to Africa and made you a district commissioner. In England, you're still a porter. Things are bad. Things are bad. So you live in Notting Hill Gate. You're one of the yuppies. Why? Well, you look middle class. You don't look working class. You middle class? No, no, Art, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. What class do you come under? You prefer to be classless. But the point is, we are living in a country where the, where the, the wealth of this country, the majority of the wealth, are controlled by 5% or 10% of the people. So how can you be classless? But how are you going to break down the classmates if you don't destroy the structures that distributes the wealth? But you're not going to break down the class barriers by saying, I want to be unclassified, I don't want to be a labeler, I want to be a classless. The concept of a classless society in Britain. I'm not a number, I'm a free man. You are not free. No man is free. Freedom is relative. Every individual is free as long as your freedom does not encroach upon mine. There is no such thing as absolute freedom. You're not a free man. You are a free man insofar as the laws which are basically there to protect capital interest and property interest allows you to be free. If you were to walk the streets and you were to hit your toe against the pave, there's some law 1800 years old that they will charge you for damaging public property. Oh, you can't deny that. So you cannot be free. As long as you sell your labor, as long as you go to work, as long as somebody else is going to determine how much that commodity costs, you cannot be free. The gentleman says, I must tell him where this utopia is. Are you English? Then I wouldn't tell you because you will go there and corrupt it the way you corrupt the whole world. <laughs> can, we as can we be as corrupt as India, you ask? Who taught them to be corrupted? They taught themselves. So what were the white men doing there for 300 years? Playing balls? You see how stupid... Uh, you see how stupid and ignorant you are. You were sh let me finish, let me finish. I asked, and I was trying to be sarcastic when I answered the gentleman's question. But you come along, you don't know anything about me, you know so little about yourself, you assume I'm from India because you asked me about corruption in India. My friend, your empire went further than the realms and the geographical boundaries of India and Africa. Don't make yourself a political ass by assuming I'm from India. I'm not from Uganda either. Have another guess. <laughs> you see, that's the trouble with white people. That is why I say most white people are like the English. You are very stupid and very backward. If you meet an American, an American will say to you, where are you from? And he will wait for the answer. If you meet a Frenchman, he will ask you, where are you from? And he will wait for an answer. But not the English. You're the only people in this world who meet somebody, especially a black man, and you ask them the question, and you answer it yourself. Where are you from, Jamaica? <laughs> and you're so stupid today, you answer the question, and then you ask it. Lovely day, isn't it? <laughs> ask me where I'm from. I know you're not interested. You're bloody interested because your pride will not allow you to ask me a question. Because white people assume they know everything about us. And you know, in real terms, my friend, you are Scottish, that's even worse. <laughs>
because you're not even independent. And when you get your independence, then you can talk to me because I've got mine, and then we will be equal. In the meantime, to treat equals equally is an injustice. Go fight for your independence, boy, because you're the only people in this world who goes around the world wearing a skirt. <laughs> and you call it a kilt. And you know what my landlady told me? If you want to know what's under a Scotsman kilt, look for the dandruff on the shoes. <laughs> Oh, you're in South Africa. So you're in Africa now. Come on, white nigger. <laughs> you're born in Scotland. Poverty. You're backward out there. And you go to Africa, where they classify you as white, unfortunately. But in the east end of England, you will be called a paki. Because your color is a bit dark. You're a dark white man. No, my friend, I'm not dark. I'm black. I'm not black? Where are you looking? Where are you looking? I've got a light sign. I use Omo. <laughs> in South Africa, what's the opposite to white? What's the opposite to white in England? Black. So if you're white and I'm the opposite, am I not black? He says no. You see, white people, white people are so fucking stupid. <laughs> that they want to define themselves and they want to define me also. Hey, man. We're not living in the 17th century. No, my friend, I will not tell you where Utopia is. Because you will go there. Name me one country in the world you, the white man, have been to that you have not fucked up. Name me one. Greenland, Greenland you'll have never went there, man. <laughs> you didn't go to Greenland, man. You didn't go to Iceland. You went to Africa. Plenty of gold. You went to India. Plenty of tea. You went to the Middle East. Cheap oil. You came to the West Indies, sugar. You didn't go to Iceland, too much fucking ice. <laughs> and you brought it all here. And you're telling me about corruption? What about Tibet? What about Tibet? Tibet. Ask the Chinese, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 Tibet has always been part of China. Ooh, no. no? If Tibet has not been part of China, then Northern Ireland will never be part of England. You see, see the logic and the imperfection of the white man's logic? Tibet, which is so close to China, is not part of China. Hong Kong, which is so close to China, is not part of China, and so far from Britain is a British colony. Hong Kong? <laughs> Northern Ireland, so close to Southern Ireland, is part of Britain. What's the matter with you? The Falkland Islands, so close to the Argentine, and so far from Britain is a British colony. England, so close to Europe, and so far from America is another state of the United States. And you're happy. Why not? If I was an American, I'll colonize you. Did you not colonize them before? 1776, when they invited you to the Boston Tea Party and gave you coffee? <laughs> Were they not a colony of yours? Oh, you're British. Don't be ashamed of it. <laughs> when you had the Empire and the Union joke flying, were you not proud of it? When we used to sing, God save the queer, were you not proud of it? <laughs> so now we don't sing God save the queer anymore because we've got a Greek living in Buckingham Palace. Isn't it strange? Isn't it strange? Your royal family are all Germans. They come from the house of Hanover. Hanover is not in Shepherd's Bush, it's in Germany. And now you wonder where Hitler used to get the information from? <laughs> and your royal lady married a Greek. Princess Margaret married an Irishman. Princess Anne, she married a horse. <laughs> now we've got four black MPs in Parliament, who knows? Next stop, Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I mean, the day we get a black man in Buckingham Palace, I can see white people walking the streets, saying to themselves, I never knew she would do that to me. <laughs> but you see, my friend, I know how you feel. I, I, yes, I do. I mean, I know how you feel. I mean, for 400 years, white people have been saying to the world, I do know how black people feel. We know how you feel. For me to come to your country, and talk to you the way I do, it must be really 
grinding you inside. Because we were supposed to be slaves. We were supposed to be indentured workers. We were supposed to be coolies. We were supposed to be living on the trees. We were supposed to be backward. So you came to civilize us. You went to Africa and you told the Africans that they must all become Christians. Because if they become Christians, when they die, they will go to heaven. Because heaven is a wonderful place. Ladies and gentlemen, if heaven was such a good place, do you think white people will tell black people about it? <laughs> so we came to England with all the expectations of being equal. Here we are in the mother country. And the white man can't come to terms with it. But I'll tell you something as I've said before. If you English people, are not white people, if you're not English, you're welcome to stay in England. If you're English and you don't like the way we are running England, please leave. You can go to the Isle of Wight, where you'll feel at home. You can go to South Africa, build the country up for us. When we decide to take it, we will come and take it. White man, you do that. Not you, I know you're Irish. The only reason why you are here, Paddy, the pubs are closed. <laughs> No, my friend, I do not knock the Irish. I have nothing against the Irish people because before we blacks came, it used to be the Irish. I remember in the late 1950s when we went for rooms, big sign, rooms to let, sorry, no blacks, no Irish. And the English are very polite. Dogs and cats welcome. <laughs> so I don't knock the Irish, but there are some Irish people in England who were born here who thinks they're white. And you know, you couldn't have been white, otherwise they will never nickname you the Black and Tan. And you know what I told them last week? The English made one mistake in Ireland. They never taught them to play cricket. What did you invent, Mr. Irishman? No, no, you invented the wheel. And in Ireland you invented the people to pull the wheel. All the prisoners in England are built by the Irish. Who are inside the Irish? Good luck to you. Yeah. The good Irishmen are in the IRA. <laughs> They're the only people who comes to England, puts the plastic bag down, and all the English are running. And when they blow the buildings up, they employ the Irish to build it back. The Irish calls it home economics. Great people, the Irish. You, you don't come into that category. Pardon? You're not really a South African then. But you're living in South Africa at the moment. You're making money? Plenty of money. How many black slaves you got home? About 40. How many black boys you have at home? Half a dozen. And you're in England. Are they looking after your wife? <laughs> and the white man in South Africa is something else. They're even telling black people now in South Africa that the whites were in South Africa before the blacks. It's true. You're from Scotland. And you're telling me it's true. You mean, you read that garbage, you don't believe it. No, 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 I no, no. The Indians were not here. You see, if you go back and read your history, which is something you don't read. My friend, I read your history, and believe me, I think on any intellectual platform, I can take you and many like you on your history, and you will find that I know more about you in your history than you know about my history. Be because, you see, as far as white people are concerned, black history started when white people arrived in our countries. And you did not have the common courtesy to say that Columbus was the first white man to arrive in the Americas. You went further and said that Columbus discovered America. Did I hear... A rat squeak. <laughs> so when I write your history, I will say, when I came to England, it was dark and foggy. I didn't see any white people. We discovered Brixton. <laughs> because you see, my friend, let me give you a little example. When Van Riebeck, the Dutchman, arrived on the coast of Africa, there were some people he met that he called the Hottentots. Did you know that? All right, you know what I mean, Hottentots. So if there were no people there before, how did he meet these Hottentots? 
And do you know, Van Riva? My friend, you're a Scotsman. For, why don't you learn? You go to South Africa, you spend a lot of time with the white tribe, and you learn nothing. All you learn is the white man was in Africa before the black man. How can the white man be in Africa before the black man? White people came from Europe. You're Caucasians. You left Europe and you went sailing the world looking for land. You arrive at some parts and you say, you discovered it. How the fuck can you discover something that was there? And then they tell us, well, when the white man came, you black people had gold. You didn't know what to do with it, so we took it from you. I ask you, if you've got a beautiful wife and you can't screw her, can I come into your house and screw her for you? Uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, my landlord has arrived. I have just been informed there's a black man and an Indian in the house of common sense. <laughs> Can I enlighten you, sir? There is not only a black man in the house of common, sir. There are four, including one black woman. Because, sir, in England you call it the house of commons, so we have decided to join you in good company. <laughs> I see you are saying that because we've got black MPs now, they will take mugging into Parliament. Well, sir, we're only learning from you because you came and mugged us in Africa, so we're returning the compliment. <laughs> the concept of mugging, sir, emanated from an English adjective which means to take. <laughs> no, sir. You see, the problem with you, sir, you're Jewish. Yes, you are. You're not Arab, sir. You're Jewish. And the problem with you, sir, is when they circumcise you, they throw the wrong piece away. <laughs> Father, where am I from? Guyana. Do you know where Guyana is? Where? You, a white man, a fucking immigrant in England, if you don't want to listen to me, go! Piss off! Go! You're not English! It, listen to an American telling me to go home! Where the hell are you from? Where are you from? You're not English! So am I, fool! Sorry? But Guyana was a British colony, sick! I am not going! What are you gonna do? Piss off! Isn't that beautiful? I'm telling a white man in his own country, piss off! <laughs> you're a British boy, like me. I'm a British subject, you're a British object. Shut up! <laughs> Guyana is part of the British Commonwealth, boy. We've got the words, you're fucking common. Upset, I hope you vomit. <laughs> because I am talking a lot of shit. You say correct, you must be a toilet to stand there and collect it. <laughs> They don't know where we come from. But because we're not English, why don't you go home? Father? My friend, I didn't say I was English, you fool. I said I was British, you jackass. <laughs> don't you know the difference? You were... A white man wants me to enlighten him. No, remain stupid. <laughs> My friend, there is no such thing in this world as an English passport. But there is something called a British passport. The word British is a generic term which is used to describe people who are British citizens. Who... Oh my God, look, why do you keep interrupting? You can't, you mean you see my mouth and you call it an ass? No wonder you like homosexuals. It's not a joke, it's a fact. My friend, because you're stupid, it doesn't... Don't tell me, please, my dear, I do not discuss politics with English women. Because, my dear, you English women are conservative, by night you liberals, and nine months later you end up in labor. <laughs> fucking, fucking. My friend, you're a white man. Fucking is too hard work for you. <laughs> Go! In his own country. Go! <laughs> my Scottish friend, can I do this in South Africa? No way, man. But you see, I am home. 
You mean I say this every week? And you come every week? I wouldn't listen to me every week. My friend, you're not in my class. The mere idea you say that you come here every week? You come here every Sunday to talk? And you got a girlfriend? You should be in home making love. Yes, my dear, I love sex. I love sex. I love sex so much, I live in Middlesex. And I'm doing intercourse at Essex University. See the white man? Doesn't like sex. Hard work. Hard work. Don't you like sex? I like it. I like it. I'm asking if she likes it. She liked it too, but because of people like you, she's gone off it. You telling me to get along? I'm not on top of... My dear lady, I am not on top of you. How can you tell me to get along? No, you said, you said, why don't you get down? The English language is a logical language. The mere idea say, why don't I get down? You imply I'm on top of you. She speaks English. You know why I'm stupid? All my teachers were English. You got education? I tell you what, I'll give you five pounds if you spell education. You got education? My friend, if you've got education, what are you doing arguing with an idiot like me? Lovely country. Are you going to pack the bastards over here? I agree with you, my brother. Being born in England doesn't make you English. But only a white man born in Africa is an African. But a black man born in England is not English. A black man born in America is a Negro. A black man born in the Caribbean is a West Indian. Fun, isn't it? But when the white man is born in India, he's still English. Cliff Richards was born in India. His great-grandmother is a coolie, and he still calls himself English. The white man is warped. You went to their country, you took their land, you took the whole country, you imposed your values, you imposed your laws, you changed the name of the country, and now one fool at a time. <laughs> and now you take it, and you're telling me that they're better off? Better off by whose standards? Yes, boy, what did you say? Let's say we blame the English for what happened there. But you are in control now. What are you doing about it now? Nothing. But your president is running to Europe talking about human rights. Where are the human rights for the Indians in America? Where are the democracy and the democratic rights for the blacks? 30 million blacks, not one black senator. How democratic are you? At least in England, now I can say, 3 million blacks. We've got four black MPs. And what are you doing in America? Fuck all. But yet, you're going around the whole world defending freedom. You're in Nicaragua supporting the rebels. Would you support the blacks in South Africa? No. But you're supporting the blacks in Angola to get rid of a legally elected government. What's the matter with you Americans? I mean, I know the English are stupid. But by God, you're not even stupid. Because to assume you're stupid is to imply you've got brains. As individuals, you're nice people. But as a nation, you're politically backward. You were in Vietnam. What were you doing there? Fighting communism. Have you ever seen communism? It's a philosophy. How are you fighting it in somebody else's country? And every day I read the newspapers, what do I read? 20,000 Viet Congs killed. American losses not severe. The next day I read 200,000 Viet Congs killed. American losses unidentified. I took a Japanese computer and I added it up. You know what I found? You Americans had killed twice the population of Vietnam. Who the fuck were you fighting? <laughs> and if you're afraid of communism so much, why don't you go and stop it where it starts from. Moscow. You can't go. The Russians are going to bust your ass. But no. You go and you pick on Grenada. A hundred and ten thousand people. Five hundred sheep. Six hundred pigs. Two hundred donkeys. And that was a threat to your security. I don't think much of your security. You Americans, look at him. 
I'm talking to him and he goes with a chewing gum. <laughs> you know, every time I see an American chewing gum, and I see a cow chewing a scud, I can tell the difference. I see the intelligence on the cow. <laughs> oh, I see. You mean we're all the same? No. You mean Americans are like us now? You mean for 400 years, white people have just realized that they are like black people? No. Welcome to the human race. <laughs> Why do you think the McDonald's hamburgers are so big? Because you Americans have got big mouths. Now look at him. He's going to defend me when the Russians come. Look at him. Look at him. Man, when the Russians come, you running to Oklahoma. And I'm not an intellectual. I know that no powers in the world will ever start a nuclear war. The day one side starts it, it's the end of human civilization. And you know who will destroy it? A white man. Whether he's from Russia or whether he's from the West. It only takes one mad white man, like Hitler. Another mad white man. Look at all the wars started by white people. You're greedy. You're barbarians. Genghis Khan, he was an Asian, half white. <laughs> At least you remember Genghis Khan. <laughs> you remember when Genghis Khan came to Europe? He took two of, the, two of his emissaries and he sent them to Russia to bring peace and the message of friendship. And the Russians were so barbaric, they cut their heads off, put it in pickle, sent it back to Genghis Khan. When Genghis Khan received it, you know what, what the history book says? The Asian invasion of Europe was an invasion, was a massacre. You remember, we are here again. <laughs> Look at the railways, we run them. Look at the corner shops, we run them. Why do you think Indians and Pakistanis don't play football matches? Did you see any of them in the last final? No. You know why? Every time the Indians and Pakistanis get a corner, they open the shop. See things that people can hear. This is democracy, my friend. This is not American hypocrisy. This is British Thatcher democracy. In order for the people to understand what you're saying, I must relate to them. So they will follow the discussion. That today there are many documentaries that are giving credit and saying homage to the American blacks in the efforts they played in the war. Yes? So what does that prove? No, my friend. I am so talking about now. I mean, I know now you have... No, my friend. I was talking about when they had to look after prisoners, when the prisoners were better treated than them. I know in American society you've changed. I know half of your cities, the commission of police are black. I know all that. And I also know that the changes came about because burn, baby, burn was the cry of that part of the world. I know that. I'm talking of you. Big says, welcome home, brother. Welcome to the human race. Things have changed. What is the American stand? Comparing your stand on Nicaragua? Your stand on UNITA in Angola? What is your stand with the ANC in South Africa? You Americans, when your country is at war, whether you support it or not, you will have to defend it. Right. Now, you have to fight. That's why people like Muhammad Ali, who stood in a ring and won his title, was stripped in his title in an office by white Americans. You Americans are making so many mistakes. How can I entrust you to defend me when the Russians come? You will. You will. Whether I like it or not, Reagan will defend the West. I live in the West. You should stay in America. Americanism for the Americans inside America is good. Outside it stinks. Say to me, why didn't you stay where you come from? <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> Why didn't your grandparents stay in Europe starving? That's right. Why did you immigrate? You motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, I only call him motherfucker because that's the word he's accustomed to. I want him to make him feel at home. You immigrant. You are an immigrant. How dare you tell me to go home? I am home, boy. They don't know his face. When the white man came to us, 
Four hundred years ago, boy, you were starving. When your ancestors went to America, they were hungry. The American Indian gave them beads and beans and gave them corn. Today they call it Thanksgiving Day. What do you do for the Indians on Thanksgiving Day? You put them on reservation and you stuff the turkey, you stupid bastard. Where are you from? America. And you a fucking immigrant telling me to go home? Your biological mistake? Shut up! Oh, yes, you're English, but I mean, you're Anglo-Saxon. I mean, and if you read English history, all your ancestors were immigrants. We only came here after them, and now they want us to go. No, you piss off, we stay. <laughs> and this week he come up with his girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? Hello, my dear, how are you? Very intelligent boyfriend you have. He was not like that before he came to my meeting. <laughs> I told you to find a black woman. <laughs> Look what you brought. Look what you brought. <laughs> and she was black when you met her. That was because it was dark. My brother, go to Brixton. There's a lot of black women there. Father, you work in Brixton and you haven't met a black woman? <laughs> you probably work by night. <laughs> You're a night worker. You like my predictions last week? Four black MPs and I gave you their names as well? I know I'm good. Don't tell me what I know, tell me what I don't know. Father, am I good with the horses? No. I prefer women. I don't like horses. You know, have you ever been to a booking shop in England? My American friend, uh, a bookie shop. You must go and see white men go in there and put their bets. And when the race is running, look at these white men. Come on, come on, come on. They're like bloody horses. Come on, come on. And then they lose and they go, fuck it, man. <laughs> Nation of gamblers. They don't work. The English are lazy. Look at him. Lazy, look at him. <laughs> That's one thing we British have. A sense of humor Americans don't have. You know what Bernard Shaw once said about the Americans? You're the only people in this world who comes from a society that has moved from barbarism to decadence without going through any kind of a civilization. Don't laugh, it's an insult. <laughs> and that little immigrant telling me, why don't I go home? My brother! I come from a country called Guyana. Do you know where it is? You don't. You as an American, not you, that little thing behind you. And as an American growing up, you should know about my country. Do you know Guyana? Where we killed 800 Americans. 800! And you came and took the bodies home. We call it the Jim Jones era. Don't fuck around with me in Hyde Park. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Can you imagine if anybody else had killed one American? And look at the Americans. The greatest nation in the world. They got a satellite up there where they can see a car's number plate in Oxford Circus. And there they went, left England, going to Libya to bomb Gaddafi home. And when they arrived, what did they bomb? The French Embassy. <laughs> you fucking idiot. And the only reason why they bombed the French Embassy was because France didn't give them power to fight over their air states. How can you fight the Russians? Can you imagine the Americans decide to drop a bomb in Moscow and it ends up in London? Because when you were in Vietnam, instead of bombing Hanoi, you bombed Cambodia. Instead of bombing Cambodia, you bomb Laos. What's the fucking matter with you? Lovely, isn't it? If Reagan can hear me now, he'll send the fucking bombers. <laughs> if the Americans are interested in stopping terrorism, why don't they try stopping some state terrorism in Israel? And who supports Israel? Uncle Sam. Who supports Iraq? The Americans. Who supports Iran? The Americans. You're giving arms to both sides to kill each other. 
And when they've killed each other, the Israelis will walk in and take both countries. Fun, isn't it? But then, instead of telling the Russians to give back Afghanistan, how about telling Israel to give the West Bank to the Palestinians? But no. But, uh, oh, you're a Jew now. Ah, I thought you were a Canadian. Yes, that's the Jews. Scratch every Jew and you'll find a Zionist. Don't you believe, after 2,000 years, that the Jews are entitled to a home? Yes, you do, don't you? After 500 years, are the Red Indians in Canada entitled to a home too? Yes. When the fuck are you leaving? Yes. You're the only people in the world who've always wanted a home. Now they've got a home, but they wouldn't go home. How do I know you're Jewish? With a nose like that, you could never hide. <laughs> Why do you think your nose is so big? The air we breathe is free. <laughs> no, my friend, of course, you're Jewish. But I wasn't asking you about religion. Judaism is a religion, not a race. Because if you look around the world, they've got Jews today with blonde hair, blue eyes, ginger beard. The Jews are a Semitic race. Semitic, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means black. White boy, how come you're a Jew? You're not a Jew. When they circumcise you, they throw the whole piece away. <laughs> what have I got against Israel? My friend Israel believes support and operate state terrorism. 90% of the people living in Israel come from Europe. Let me give you a classical example. Golda Meir, Prime Minister of Israel, born in Russia, educated in America, Prime Minister of Israel. Menachem Begin, born in Poland, Educated in America, Prime Minister in Israel. Yasser Arafat, born in Jerusalem, educated in America, refugee in Morocco. Falashes? <laughs> My friend, the Falashes are from Africa. <laughs> are the Falashes Jews? What color are they? How come some of you are white? No, I'm not talking with you. I'm talking with other Jews. How come they're white? British because we're talking about a nationality, not a religion and a race. Come on, my friend. If you don't know the answer, ask. Ask me, boy. Say, Mr. Speaker, can you please tell me? You know why you're bold? When you make love, you put your head in the wrong place. <laughs> My friend, I am very ugly. I am a bastard. But when I look at you, I recognize another bastard. I, I am ugly. If your daughter saw me, she'll want to screw right now. That's my ass is bad. I'm not a homosexual. You've got a dumb ass. You are a homo. Me? I, let me tell you who I am. My name is Roy. It is short for royalty. <laughs> so if I am stupid, why are you standing listening to me? <laughs> That's one white man demoralized. <laughs> I mean, I never went to university. I never went to school. I never went to college. Everything I know, I learned here in High Park and in libraries. Because I was unemployed, I couldn't get a job. Every time I went for a job, listen to the white man. Have you got two years experience? No, sir. I go for another job. Have you got two years experience? No, sir. But none of the bastards would give me a job so I can get the two years experience. <laughs> I went for a, to join the union. They said to me, have you got a job? I said, no, sir. I go for a job. They said, can you give me a job so I can join the union? Have you got a union card? No, sir. So I can't get a job? I can't get a union card. The English are hypocrites. Real hypocrites. Those of you who are English, put your hands up. One, 
That's all right, put it up, two. Not your umbrella, your hands. Three, four, five, six. Tell me, how does it feel to be a minority in your own country? <laughs> Look around. We've added a bit of color to England, haven't we? And now we've got four black MPs in Parliament. Ah, uh, we are going there next Thursday with our steel bands, calypsos, our guitars, and we are taking the Indian drums, beating the message out that now we've got four, who knows, next election, 44. <laughs> Pada? Listen to him. He's willing to bet that they will all wear suits. I've got a hundred pounds on me. I'll bet you that they will wear their national clothes. Right. Yes. Yeah. See what I mean? Now, this is the point. And that's why I told him that. He said he thought they were British. And they would wear their British clothes. Tell me, white man. <laughs> we're only learning from you. You came to my country. Look at me. I wear your clothes. I couldn't wear a kurta and a dhoti. Because every time I bend down, there'll be an Englishman behind me. <laughs> but never mind. A Shakespeare once said, the clothes you wear, the job you do, the food you eat, does not defile at you. It's the things that come out of you. Clothes has nothing to do with them being an MP. Look, we got black policemen. They wear your British uniforms. And they look very nice. A black policeman in a black uniform. Even the criminals are complaining because they can't see them in the night. <laughs> Only when they laugh. <laughs> I take your point. We are over here. So we must dress like you. And we must do the things like you. But I ask you, my white brother, when the white man came to Africa, and when you came to India, did you behave like us in our country? No. You behave like a white man in Africa. We will behave like black people in England. If you don't like it, leave. Because it seems as if you're concerned about what kind of clothes they wear. Oh, all politicians are hypocrites. Maggie Thatcher would like to hear you say that. She will cut... She will cut your unemployment benefit off. My friend, I know all politicians are hypocrites. That's why I'm not a politician. But you voted, didn't you? You didn't vote? You should go to jail. Or pay a fine like Australia. That's right. The Australians have the right ideas. You must vote. Do you? It's a British car. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I look around, I wonder if India will export some cars to England so we can see our Indian brothers driving Padminis around. Do you know India produces cars? You didn't know that? You don't know about India? Come on. I have seen you in an Indian restaurant before. Come on. Come on. Don't lie. I saw you. Oh, oh I see you like kebab. And where do you think the idea of kebab came from? I don't know. You don't know, but you eat it. <laughs> Any Australians here? Aren't you an Australian, my dear? I'm sorry. Where are you from? You're an American. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're proud of being an American? Can you tell me one thing why you're proud of being an American? One reason? What you stand for? Well, I don't know what you stand for. Because <laughs> if I know what you stand for, I will know what you lie down for. <laughs> what do you... What do you... I can't hear you. In general, she says, American people cares about other people. Do you care about the Native Americans? You do care? 
Where are they now? No, 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 no. Let's no, no. I know you don't agree. I'm talking about you said. Forget Reagan. I not talk with your country too. You see, you just came. I said earlier that Americans as individuals are nice people. But collectively, politically, you're stupid. If you were not stupid, Reagan could have never lied to the world when we know that you, the Americans, have been exchanging arms for hostages. If you American people were not politically backward, your troops would not have been in the Lebanon that every time you hear a car bomb, you run. And if you Americans were not politically obsolete, the Ayatollah will have never held 53 of you for a whole year. Can you imagine the Ayatollah holding 53 Americans as hostages? And listen to President Carter. If you don't release them, I am going to, I thought he was going to say, bomb Iran. He didn't say that. He said, I am going to boycott the Olympics. <laughs> you see, when black people fight each other, it's terrible. But when white people fight each other, it's a neighborly dispute. Go fuck yourself. Here we go again. The democracy they have in India today, is it a European democracy? Hold on, the man. Hold on, hunky. Hold on. You're not understanding. I am saying to you, boy, that any European concept of democracy will not work in any black country. I just said that. So if you knew that, why did you ask me about democracy in India? My friend, it will not work. Just the system, but in, in Europe, in Europe, in Europe, don't you have a class system? My friend, in India, in India, we worship cows. In Europe, you marry them. If you go back to the last election last week, Thursday, and you check the final figures, you will see that the Conservative Party have got the least number of votes. The Labour Party got more. The Liberal SDP Alliance got 7 million, and yet Maggie Thatcher, with less votes, have become the government of the day. If that is the kind of democracy white people want for India, then the answer is no. Can I describe India before the Portuguese, the English, before they came there? If you go back, I don't know how long you want me to go back for. Something said, let me go back far. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions in the world. It is 5,000 years old. When my ancestors were wearing silk and living on the trees, you Europeans were painting your skin with tar brushes and you were living in caves. We were higher than you then. At least we have come down and we've got corner shops. But you're still living in the caves. But you don't call them caves. You call them basements. I know, you see, you go to Goa. There's a lot of white people in Goa who lives on the beaches. They smoke hash and they have a ball. Running around naked because that's India. Because in India, we have no homosexuals. In England, we, in India, how do you know? <laughs> In England, because England is the only English-speaking country in the world where homosexuality is legal. Everybody is going forward, the English are going backward. And when I look at you, I say to myself, which woman will have you? Look at you. When last you had a piece of pussy? Look at you, my God. 
When I look at men like you, I now see why English women prefer dogs. Man, you're fucking ugly. Me married, you think I'm stupid? Why should I get married and make one woman unhappy when I can remain a bachelor and make including your sister happy? <laughs> How can I hate white people? I feel sorry for them. Very, very sorry. It was like a Pakistani coming around the corner last night, driving at 90 miles an hour. Policeman stopped him. Says to me, hey, you Paki, you're drunk. And the Pakistani says, sorry, officer. It's against my religion. I don't drink. So they said to him, blow in this bag. And he said, sorry, officer. I'm a Muslim. I can't put my mouth there. He says, come with me to the police station. So they took him over there and they sent for the doctor to give him a blood test. So the doctor came and he says, I am here to take a blood test. The Pakistani says, sorry, sir. It's against my religion. I cannot give you a blood test. So the doctor says, well, I will have to take a urine test. And the Pakistani says, sorry, officer, you cannot do that because the Race Relations Act says you cannot take piss out of Pakistani. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> when you write my history, what do you tell me? Columbus discovered America. Marco Polo discovered China. Cecil Rhodes discovered Africa. Lawrence of Arabia discovered the Arabs, but he didn't see the oil. Clive discovered India. We were all asleep. And this goddamn white man came and said, You discovered! And we jumped up so high, three million ended up in England. <laughs> We've only been here for about 35 years. And the only been here 35 white man I've got 265 years more to go and when they went to India they went there to educate the Indians remember Sanskrit which is the mother of all languages was spoken during the Hindu era 5,000 years ago in India but, let me finish let me finish let me finish I'm giving you my side of my history that you will not read in white people's books. Because you see, white people can't write. Oh, you're doing economics. My friend, who invented the numeral system? My friend, I will in a minute. You, as a young American, who do you think discovered the usage of zero in computers. The zero was discovered by the Indians. The new, not okay. Every time you say okay, it sounds as if you're suffering from a limited vocabulary. The inability to develop the statement. Rational? You, an American, wants me to be rational? Hold on, man. We're not doing sociology here. No, my friend. The Mayans are red Indians. I am talking about the Indians from the river Indus, India. The Mayans is a different type of Indians. That's what you call Red Indians. You know, in India we got East Indians. We got West Indians. We got Red Indians. Give us 20 years time, we'll have some White Indians. <laughs> right? Now, listen to what I'm saying. The white man went to India to teach the Indians English. Okay. And after 200 years, every Indian today speaks English like Peter Sellers. This same goddamn white man went to India to help the Indians. The same thing he says about Africa and China. He taught them to become civil servants. That's why we have no democracy. Taught them to become shopkeepers. Taught them to become engineers. Taught them to become postal workers. When we were capable of running India, he gave us our independence and he left. We were in India and we understood that England had some problems. So we came and we ran the corner shops. 